Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, my dear friends. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience to consider and we are still on Mount Moriah. Today, Abraham, Isaac and his two servants are right at the foot of the mountain. Join me in Genesis chapter 22 and we'll look at verses 4 and verse 5. It reads as follows in verse 4. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Verse 5. And Abraham said to his servants, Settle down and stay here with the donkey, and I and the young man will go yonder and worship and come again to you. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word and let us pray and invite his presence this morning. Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name. And dear Lord, we have been on a voyage throughout the week, and we are coming to the end of the working week, and we are about to go on and fellowship with thee. Dear Lord, we claim the promise of arriving at the set destinations. Be our guide and be the one who shall talk to us as we come up to the mountaintop this weekend. This is our fervent prayer in Jesus' name. We pray and ask. Come again to us. Amen and amen. My dear friends, we want to raise, as usual, just five points. And point number one, notice it took Abraham, Isaac, and the two employees three days to get to their destination. It took them three days from the promise to the fulfillment. And I draw your attention to John chapter 2, the verses 18 to 21. There right, we find Jesus refer to three days. This is after he has driven out those who are selling their wares in the temple. And these had the audacity to ask, by whose authority do you do such things? Christ retorts, you may destroy this temple and in three days I will set it up. And they ask, how can you say you will set it up when it took us about 46 days, 46 years to get it in place? 46 years and you say in three days you're going to set it up. They thought. John now gives the elaboration that he referred to the physical temple, yet he was referring to himself. Some have said this prophecy never came true. Christ did not take three days in the tomb. But if you look at the three days, the three days are supposed to be counted from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning. The Bible counts this way, evening and morning, and it was the first day. That is the creation account. So evening of Thursday and morning of Friday, that is the first day. Evening on Friday and morning on Saturday, that is the second day. Evening on Saturday and morning on Sunday, that becomes the third day. Now, if you want to break it apart, you'd say, how many evenings were there? Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. How many mornings were there? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it checks out to three days. And indeed, Christ had rebuilt the temple and he did this in his own mind, in his own power, even though the angel came and called him back to life. And in those three days, what does the Bible assure us? We are going to arrive at our destination. In those three days, God is going to set us up. Even over this weekend, may God lead us to our destinations. May we arrive safely. And God allows us at point number two to see and view these destinations from a distance. And the invitation is, look up. When Abraham came, he looked up and he saw the mountain of Moriah that the Lord had chosen for him from a distance. And doesn't the Bible say, when you begin to see these things, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Go back to Psalms, doesn't it say, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My, com my help cometh from the Lord. The Lord is to be found at the top of the mountain. And as we go into this experience over the weekend, take time to look up, take time to come up, for the Lord invites you to the top of the mountain. At point number three, Abraham has been called to come with Isaac. And Abraham does not only go with Isaac, he takes two more employees with his servants. There are four of them. And let us take time, oh Abraham and Isaac, no matter how righteous you are, in the walk of faith, you will not walk alone. You will need somebody to take you along the way. 
halfway along the way, three quarters along the way, 90% of the way, be that as it may, all those who walk with us in the walk of faith, they make our experience even better. They are those who are not going to be mentioned. Yes, there is an Abraham. Yes, there is an Isaac. But these two servants are not known by name. They are those who shall contribute to our walk, to our faith, to our experience. They may not be known by name, but great is the contribution that they make. Let us take time to appreciate this. They are the servants. They are those who carry us there. They are those who see to it that we arrive safely. We arrive safely. We will not walk alone. Nobody is too righteous that they need to walk alone. Nobody is self-sufficient that they can do without help. Even Abraham needed help along the way. Accept the help and may the Lord be with you. At point number four, the Bible says, Abraham says, we are going yonder. What for? To worship. Every time there's an errand, every time there's an experience with the Lord, the purpose is for worship. The purpose is for worship and nothing else. Whenever we talk to the Lord, it can be in the confines of worship. When we talk to God, it can only be in the parenthesis brackets of worship. Everything that we do, every act of our life. We may be working with our servants. We may be working with our colleagues. We may be working with our children. Every act is an act of worship. Take time to realize this. You cannot do anything with the Lord unless and until the context and foundation is worship. At point number five, as we near the end, we don't want to belong today. Abraham, Abraham now says, when we go up to worship, we are going to come again to you. Now he knows pretty well, the young man is not to come again. But at times, God does not make sense to us. And even when God does not make sense to us, we need to walk with faith. We need to speak with faith. We need to prophesy with faith. He says, I will come again to you with the young man. When God does not make sense, what should he do? Go back to point number four. Always be in a mode of worship. When God does not make sense and he demands things we cannot understand, what should he do? Have faith that we shall come again for he who sends us out will bring us again. That is our God. He does not call us to fail us. He calls us to elevate us. He calls us to make us better than what we were before. That is the experience that I wish to bring and challenge you to as we go into this weekend. Take time to worship God. Take time to have faith in him. He has brought you through these three days. He has brought you through these five days. He has brought you so far. He cannot leave you. Look up and expect your redemption for it is at hand. What are the five points that I leave with you? Christ took three days. Abraham took three days. And definitely there was a delivery. The target was met in three days. Heaven always delivers. Point number two. Look up. The invitation is look up. Do not keep your sights down here. Your redemption is up at the mountain. Look up for our redemption comes from there. And while you're looking up, take note, this is not an easy road. You cannot travel it alone. You cannot travel it with family alone. They are those who help you along the way. Take them along. Take even any help that will come your way in your spiritual growth. It will help you. Why? At point number four, you are engaged in an act of worship every day, every week, every year, every moment of your life. And above all, God will not always make sense. Have faith, trust him, and do not lose hope in him. This is the God we serve. He is calling us to the mountaintop. And come Monday, let us meet Abraham and Isaac when they have arrived at the mountaintop. Blessings and peace. God bless you.